Hello there. My name is Tom. I'm a member of Welney Youth Club. Here we are on one of our research trips at the Prickwillow Drainage Museum. Our purpose is to try to find out more about the various ways the fens have been drained over the years and how it changed the way of life of local people. It was a good thing, yes, I'm sure, because all this land then came into production. The draining of the fens um, really happened, kind of, it happened, started during the Roman times, so draining started during the Roman times, and there's evidence that certain channels and ditches and drains were dug um, 2,000 years ago. But it didn't really start to get moving until about the 17th century, and um, it was... Um, I think it was Charles I who basically um, commissioned um, a drainage programme here. And the guy that drained the fens, or the engineer that planned the drainage of the fens, was a chap called Cornelius Vermoyden, who was a Dutchman, uh, a Dutch engineer. He came here and he, he was the master of the, of, the, of, of the plan to drain the fens. While we were at Prickwillow Museum, we got the chance to quiz an actor who played the part of Vermoyden. Okay, then what is your name? Well, my name, well, we should have started with that, is Cornelius Vermoyden. In fact, Sir Cornelius Vermoyden. I was knighted by His Majesty King Charles I. You want to know a little bit about my, my past life before I came to the fence? Yeah. yeah. You do, right. Yeah. Well, I was not born in England, as you can probably tell by my teensy wincy accent. I was actually born in Zealand, in the Netherlands. And I came first to Dagenham. Have you heard of Dagenham before? Yes. Yeah. In London, the Thames? Did uh, she indeed? Ah. Well, I came to Dagenham because there was a problem with the Thames. One of the banks had broken. And I was a drainage engineer, so I was sent for, and I repaired the bank there. And the King, Charles I, have you heard of the King Charles? Yeah. 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 Charles he was so impressed by my work, he commissioned me to do some work on the Isle of Axholm. And the biggest one is actually... Well, it was only a very small part of the overall project. Because I said 95,000 acres of land were to be drained. And of these 95,000 acres, of course, Wellney falls into the middle of that area. And what we decided to do was dig great new rivers, the Old Bedford River and the New Bedford River. Large rivers were to be dug with banks on either side. And the piece of land in between would, in effect, become a washland. So the idea was that all the water, we would drain out as much of the water as possible in the summer. But in the winter, when there was extra water from the rain and melting snow, etc., what would happen was that these washlands would intentionally flood, if you like. It would be a reservoir, a way of getting rid of water in a hurry. And it would stay there and then gradually dissipate, gradually be drained away. And unfortunately, Welney is slap back right next to, or partly in, a wash area. I believe that you have trouble with your road in Welney. Is this correct? Yes, we went through it today. Did you? You went through it. Was it flooded, though? It was. Well, it's supposed to be flooded, you see. You all think, I dare say, that it's very inconvenient, troublesome that your road is flooded. But actually, it was designed to flood in that way. In the winter, all this excess water pools there at Welney, and then in the summer, of course, it drains away. So that's why your road at Welney floods, and why, of course, I was doing drainage work in Welney. Imagine a big new drainage scheme, scheme is starting. Now then, would you expect to be able to get work on this new drainage scheme if you wanted to? I'm sure you're all hard working, aren't you? And you'd want a job and so you'd want to work. Well, your parents would, wouldn't they? I'm sure. Now, when I started draining the fence, because it was quite a specialised job, it wasn't something anybody could do, I brought in all my own workers, Dutch workers. So just imagine, there you are sitting at home and you've always lived your lives in the way that you're living them, and suddenly this foreigner, this Dutchman, this Cornelius Vermoyden, comes in with his own workforce and starts to rearrange the entire landscape. Well, as you can imagine, people weren't particularly happy. And in fact, they were so unhappy that in some cases there were riots and protests against what I was doing. Because the other thing you probably haven't thought of is this. Just imagine... You were living in, say, Ely or Soham or somewhere like that, and you were used to a life where all the surrounding land was flooded, and there were ducks and other waterfowl, and there were fish, and that was the life you were used to. Then suddenly, 
Somebody comes in, starts to dig ditches and build banks and drain water. Well, all those ducks and fish and other things, your lifestyle suddenly changes. The drainage of the fens changed life in Welney and surrounding areas dramatically. While we were at Prickwillow, we were shown the pumps which were made for the purpose of drainage. There are still the remains of many of these throughout the network of drainage ditches, including one just outside Welney. These pumps pumped colossal amounts of water. Well, my name is uh, Mike, Mike Penberth, and uh, I'm a member of, of this museum here. Um, the museum's run by a group of volunteers. That pump would move 140 tonnes of water every minute. Uh, can you imagine 140 tonnes a minute? I'll try and help you. You know the petrol tankers that you see in the filling stations? Filling the filling station up. Well, they perhaps hold about 30 tonnes. So you can imagine something like five of those every minute going between there and there and emptying in the river. We were given that one over there, the two-cylinder one, and that came from Feltwell Fen. Um, and we had to bring that here. And um, imagine trying to lift that. Yeah, the flywheel alone weighs two and a half tonnes. But we did that, and we rebuilt it here, and we got it running. And later on, um, we were going to run that for you. The, the Vickers Petter there, the two-cylinder one, the one that we're going to start for you, is the oldest engine we've got here. Um, and that one was about 1921, um, although the design goes back uh, somewhat earlier. This engine was built in Ipswich in 1921 and is believed to be the only preserved example of this type. The distinctive thump of the exhaust is only surpassed by the spectacle of lighting up of the blow lamp which heats bulbs from white heat, necessary to induce ignition when the engine is first started. 